Hey guys, Mike, the host of Crushing Your Fear. How you doing today? How's your fear? How's your daily fear going? I know you. I know you're handling it. You are strong. You're gonna make it. Today we have uh, a great woman, Rebecca Plants, and uh, she is a transformational soul coach and influential mastermind. That's uh, Stacy Rasky's group. I'm part of that mastermind, and we were talking before and. Talk about transformation and change for me this year, huh? Holy cow. <laughs> we had a lot. So, Rebecca, um, thanks for being on. Thanks for making the time. Yeah, no worries. It's great to see you, Michael. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. So, you're, um, it is transformational, so coach. I mean, you, you, you work a lot around energy and um, the human design, like how people are designed, you know, and, and how they act and, and they come into this world and, you know, there are certain, um, there's a certain characteristics of each person. And then there's also conditioning that goes around that, you know, there, there's some fear conditioning. So maybe we, we could jump into that, the human design. Yeah, sure. So human design is basically how we are individually made. And everyone has a unique design. And largely, it comes down to what your energy body looks like and how your energy works. There are five different types of human design. But the nuances are down in the details of the design versus just staying at the high level of the types. Regardless, in the design, you know, fear is actually part of our survival instinct in the design. We have places where fear will show up. And then we also have external conditioning, how conditioning works on our design from social influences, our family, our friends, our peers, right? Yeah. We all end up to some degree conditioned um, by our culture and our environment. So what we do in human design is we try to understand our core design who we were made to be, and then look at it from the context of how that shows up in the world effectively, how we can have impact given who we were made to be and given what's in our conditioning field. Yeah, it's interesting. The human design is based on um, your birth date. Uh, you plug it in and I'm a, I'm a manifesting generator. And then you're always like on the call. It's like, yep, that's what a manifesting generator would say. <laughs> I'm like really okay but I, I can see myself as that and I, I try to you know uh, and then you gave me the, the the type like archetypes right mm -hmm. and you know I see myself doing that so the stuff is very accurate and uh, yeah. um, going into e yeah the, each one like a couple that like you said there's five of them maybe you can kind of briefly kind of go over those and maybe they people yeah. can kind of look at it and yeah Sure. I mean, the first time I saw my chart, I looked at it and I, and this is, you know, carbon dating myself, but 20 years ago <laughs> and I saw my chart and I like thought to myself, like, I finally met myself. Like I finally understood because I looked at it and I knew exactly how that energy worked just by looking at that chart. And I always kind of felt it and wondered why I did the things I did or how I did the things that I did. And then all of a sudden, like the light bulbs went on and it's been a 20 year journey of really digging into the nuances of the chart, but at the high level, uh, the five different types. So for example, you said you're a manifesting generator. So manifesting generators are about 30% of the population. Uh, pure generators are about 35% of the population. So in any given group of people, you're going to have just over 70% are probably going to be a type of generator. They are the people here to work. And so what they will do is they will literally do the heavy lifting in a group. They will be the ones to kind of drive the energy of the group to a, a completion. And then you have projectors, about 20% of the population. They're here to guide others. In particular, they're here to help generators effectively and efficiently do things, get work done, organize things, et cetera. They're great coaches and great guides for people. You have about 10% that are manifestors. They're really just here to start things. And I shouldn't say just, they're the, really the only ones that can properly just initiate things without having to ask permission or wait for opportunities. So they're here to kind of initiate and start energy, but then you need the generators to kind of carry through what, what the manifestors start. And then you have a very, very small percentage, 1% of the population, they're called reflectors. Reflectors are really valuable if you know them. 
because what they do is they they show you through their behavior they reflect back the energy of the group so if you think about the most famous reflector that existed was michael jackson and if you think about where mm -hmm. michael jackson lived and some of the, as he got older some of the behaviors you saw in him he was reflecting back the community in which he belonged which was hollywood so it tells you the health of hollywood based on michael jackson mm. that's how simple it is to really under reflectors have a hard life and i've only known four in the 20 years that i've done this work i've only seen four charts of reflectors they're that rare they're unicorns and a healthy community a reflector will show up very you know centered grounded because they're in a community that's you know not that's very functional if you see someone that's dysfunctional, you know the community they belong to is not is not really stable. So they're a good canary in the coal mine if you if you can actually meet one. Um, generators are the most common. You're going to run into those pretty much everywhere you go. So you can tell them by like literally just they'll probably be the people that do the heavy lifting in the groups for the most part. You know they and they will work. They will work a lot. Uh, one area in the design, though, when it comes to fear, well, there's really two that I would look at. One in particular, is, it's called the splenic center. And the splenic center is, you know, there's always optimal and suboptimal expression of whatever our energy is. The optimal expression of the splenic center is instinct and intu in intuition and immunity. The less optimal expression is it also carries our, our source of fear. So when we go into fight or flight, it's that center that may be kicking in with areas of fear and they're very survival based fears. So you have things like fear of failure, fear of not things, not being enough, right? That's where you find the energy of people who become hoarders, for example, they can't let go of things. Um, you find the energy of, um, people who are afraid to go out in the world because they're either afraid of the future or they don't want to repeat the past. So that center is where our energy is held, where we can develop, you know, fears all the way into phobias. But on the positive side, that expression is if we manage the energy of that center, we can be very effective in the world because we're responding to the right things. We're using our fight or flight and our survival instincts for positive to be in the right place at the right time. Um, so I think, you know, that's one area where not only are we designed in a certain way, but we also get conditioned. So when we get conditioned in our fears, that's one of the places in the body it actually sits. So it, it actually eventually manifests in the body. And then you always have to worry about the mental body <laughs> because the mental body is the upper centers in the design it's where you have confusion, uncertainty, and doubt. Literally, that's the energy in those centers. So when we get in that sense of, of it's really FUD, right? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, and you get into that mental state where you, you can't get clarity. Knowing what your design is, particularly your type, can tell you how to get out of the mental chatter, how to get out of the fear body, and how to actually work with your, your true choice making mechanism. So for a generator, if you have kids, one way you know a kid is a generator is because you ask them a yes or no question and instinctively and naturally, they will say, uh-huh or uh-uh, and they'll use their body in motion. Like if they're attracted to something, they will literally lean in. It's a physical thing or they'll be repelled back. So generators are very physical in their um, manifestation, how they do things. But they will say, uh-huh, uh-uh, as a kid. And we condition them out of that. We say, that's not polite. Don't say that, right? Say yes or no. But their truth is really, uh-huh, uh-uh, because that comes from the sacral center where the generator is located. So that's their truth. When we condition people and kids out of that truth, they start to make decisions and choices from the head. And then that becomes logic filled with uncertainty and doubt <laughs> and confusion. So we want to make sure we're helping our kids grow, you know, into, you know, strong uh, individuals because we help them understand their authority, for example. Projectors, they often have to hear themselves think. So their truth is actually hearing, hearing, their, hearing their truth out loud. My father was a projector 
he would walk across the yard. I grew up on a farm. So he would walk across the yard and I'd always sit and go, well, why is he talking to himself all the time? But that was literally how he heard what he needed to do. He, he had to project it out and then hear it. And then he could make his choices based on that. Um, manifestors, they can make it more of an identity, make it more from an identity based. Who am I? What do I want? That can be more their, their tr truth is. And then reflectors are like, they just have to wait 28 days. <laughs> They have to wait to get clarity before they actually know their truth. So they have it's to a wait. They have to wait 28 days, not just wait, 28 days. <laughs> 28 days. But it's unbelievable. You know, like you're talking about all this stuff, and they don't do this in school. You know, they don't talk about the mind. And the mind is so yeah. powerful. You talk about hoarders, right? They had that show on. I don't know if it's still on. Oh, my God. Like these people would just buy stuff. And then get trapped in their homes. But a lot of the times, these hoarders, some kind of event happened in their life. Some type of event. And the, and there was like a switch that flipped. And they just stayed home and ordered stuff from Amazon or whatever. And it was just delivered in. And stuff that they didn't even unbox. Like they just order stuff and put it there. And just stack it up and just close themselves in. And then yeah. these people had to go in and, and just like, Take it. And then family intervention too. Like this place is, is this disaster. What are you doing? You know, and mm -hmm. it, it's very sad. And, and that's the mind it's just, and also the mind is very powerful. It could cause disease. It causes disease. I know this, you know, people get in, in some, some bad state and they think, oh my God, I can't get out of this. Uh, or they surround themselves with people who are negative or have mm -hmm. a lot of fear. And, and that causes these these diseases it's not woo woo stuff it's true it's, you see it over and over again you know yeah i always say the body's the last to know right because yeah. what's happening what's happening is you have four bodies you have a physical i mean a spiritual body a mental body emotional body and a physical body and everything comes in from the from the spiritual like you may have a spiritual insight you may have a spiritual connection but when that is coming down into your reality, you're bringing that through whatever noise is sitting in your mental and your emotional body, whatever traumas you've had, whatever programs you've been led to believe, the belief systems you've developed, the fears that you have, right? So you can have the highest possibility in your mind for your life, and then you bring it down through all that noise. And until you kind of clear out that mental and emotional body, it can bring in disease, because it's got it's got those things that are limiting you in some way, and that's how your body gets diseased. That's how you create, you know, um, manifestations in your physical world that are, you know, not really what you want. Because that mental chatter, that mental belief system, that's a block. That's a block to the true potential that you have, the highest potential that you have. And hey, I've had plenty of them. So you know, there are you know, know. my parents. I think everybody has class. plenty of them. I had them too, but we're trying to work through those in our group here. Yeah. I've been pretty yeah, good, and I've identified like wow. And then like Stacy would say something like, like I was like yeah. I don't know. She would say something, and then and then I would uh, ping her again and 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 repeat it. And she's like, "Do you have like trust issues?" I'm like. Holy cow! I have trust issues. I do. <laughs> I can't even. Sometimes I don't even trust myself, right? And then, but but that like light switch turning on, I'm like, I'm doing it again. I can't. I'm not trusting myself, or I'm not trusting somebody else. And that's been a huge in the past. Like people like told me specifically, like, why don't you believe me, or why don't you trust me? Like, what's what's the deal? You know. And and these are things that you really have to uncover, and they don't do this in school. Yeah. And, and no. therapists, I'm sorry, you know, I, li I like the therapist and stuff like that, but, but so prescribing somebody a pill, you know, to take yeah. care of something rather than unwrapping it or uncovering it or getting to the root cause of why, 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 why. And that's one of the things, reasons why I do this fear podcast. And I've just wrote the book, you know, crushing your fear on the whole, whole bunch of areas in our lives that are just riddled with, you know, either, either people suppressing us they don't want us to do something. They want to control us. And it's horrible stuff. Yeah. Well, think about how many people um, will do things out of peer pressure or will do things out of that sense of ostr like being ostracized or something, yeah. right? Like peer pressure is very powerful in our conditioning field. 
and it can create that type of behavior where you do things that really aren't right for you. Mm -hmm. You can also, um, you know, when you think about what's happening in the media or what's happening, you know, in the programming, because it becomes programming. You hear something, it's, I have a marketing major is one of my majors. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things they teach you is a repetition of message, right? Yes. And repetition of message is to condition and program your mental body. It's a program. They, they call it a program. program. Are we, I'm watching that program tonight because I'm going to be programmed. And, you know, the, 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 uh, the news, um, also social media, too. It's just rampant, like groups. Yes. But that goes all to back to the primal thing, you know, the tribes, you know? Like people had tribes originally, and like if you didn't weren't in lockstep with what the tribe believed in, you were just cast out, and they're like, right. "Good luck, good luck to you," and right. like there'd be animals and other tribes that like capture you and and you know whatever eat you or whatever. I don't know what they do. I wouldn't want to be outside the tribe, but then you know what do you do? But that's everybody yeah. wants to find a group to to be with. You know, they look for that um, acceptance, I guess. Even yeah, kids, so you know, I mean, think about kids like being accepted by their parents yeah. doing stuff, you know, and then getting very upset when, when they yeah. say one thing to them. It's horrible. Parents can say one, one sentence to a kid and, and change the course of their lives because mm -hmm. they've been rejected. So it's crazy. Yeah, it, yeah the, ne the negative feedback and really sometimes the overly positive feedback, like some some of the fear that happens for people as they get older is it can go two ways, right? You can be told that you're not enough becomes the program of the mind. Then you don't have enough confidence to go forward and attempt things or try things. Mm -hmm. so, so some of that's limiting. So it's really, where are you limiting yourself? The flip side of that is you hear too much positive feedback and you don't get enough correction. Then you can be overly optimistic and overly you know, and then you fail and you can't get back up. So the resilience yes. piece is, is what comes in there, right? They say um, some of the studies I've read recently are around um, why they, you know, why they're worried about some of the mental health in the young generation. Some of it, they, some, you know, experts have attributed it to, um, we don't let our kids fall down and, you know, fail and then get, learn how to get back up and learn that resilience. I know so it's so comfortable. Yeah. Failure is a great teacher. Failure is a great teacher. And, you know, you got to go through the hard times to learn. And then, because some, yeah. some people, you can't tell people what to do. They have to learn it on their own. I, I've found, I know that for, as a truth. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, I put that in my book too, like the helicopter moms, you know, protecting their kids. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, but like you said, like you, you prop, prop these kids up they think they're prima donnas and then they go out into the reality they get slammed and like you said they get slammed and they don't get up you know because or they, they they don't have enough hard times but it is really failure they don't have enough failure we protect them too much maybe even if we're not you know feeding them you know too much positivity it could just be we're protecting them to your point in the helicopter we protect them too much they don't learn how to get back up again, get back up and keep trying, get back up and, you know, move forward. Um, and they, and then they just sort of collapse. So one of the things that I see is just the ability to deal with failure, deal with things not really being great. Once they get into a, adulthood, I have several, you know, several nieces and nephews and, and really learning how to do that. I grew up with parents who survived the depression. They were children in the depression. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my parents were the age of most people's grandparents. So, and I have a big family. So talking about conditioning, right? They were conditioned to believe in lack. They were conditioned to believe in poverty. Poverty. They were conditioned that things are really, really hard. Um, and money is really hard to come by. So when you want to have like an abundance mindset, right? Growing up with somebody who, and parents who grew up in the depression, the plus side of that, right? Value it everything. Uh, the plus side of that is you learn how to be frugal and take care of things and not be wasteful because we saved everything. On the flip side, that scarcity, you have that scarcity mindset and that's a fear. 
So yeah. you can have kind of conditioning just based on what, you know, previous generations grew up with. And then on the flip side of that is the abundance we had for so many years, you know, we didn't have um, truly people have to worry to that extent where they just literally didn't know where their next meal was coming from on a daily basis for years. The flip side, right, is then we don't learn how to, to treasure things or take care of things because it's a throwaway society, right? We can just get more. We can go to Amazon and get more, right? <laughs> I can just order and I yeah, get, and you I have get Amazon, more. right? And you have to go out and find the damn thing. You just you just go on your phone, yeah, and, and click on the color. Yeah, my daughter sent me an exact link to what she wanted for Christmas. You know, even with the engraving, like what to engrave and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's there's always moderation, right? There's that whatever that is in the middle of being grateful for what you have and not in fear that it won't be there. That's really, I think, the ideal state. From a not be in fear, but also not not assume, right? Not feel entitled. Yeah, I, it's just terrible, you know. I, I, the society today. I mean, every, I don't know. I guess I sound like a, a, like one of my parents or something. <laughs> you know, like I, I find myself saying that. I'm like, these kids today, they don't know what the heck's going on. You know, right? And I'm yeah. like, I got to stop doing that. But I, <laughs> I see it, and it's like everybody has a phone. They have a like, you know, you can look at your hand, you can find any kind of information. You have. And also the danger yeah. of that is like a, a lot of this, the, a lot of even the government are ban banning like TikTok and stuff like that. Like they're just yeah. banning it because it's like they can inter infiltrate your phone, steal data. And, but kids can just, yeah. they, they don't know. They just say, okay, yes. Yeah. Give us your social security. No problem. Hey dad, yeah. what's my social security number? I'm like, why do you need that for, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, this is like X, Y, Z website. You got to put it in. I'm like, no, you don't. You're not going to do that. So. And, and that's interesting because that is the, that is the side of fear that instincts are helpful. Instincts are really helpful. I dated somebody who was a sex crimes prosecutor. Oh. And the one thing, and the one thing he said to me was, if you ever feel uncomfortable, let's say getting in an elevator with somebody or walking down a street, he goes, every single one of the victims that he had worked with had felt like something was off, right? Like they just, they had this instinct and they Intuition. ignored it. Intuition. That is the plus side of our instinctual body is it can keep us safe. It can keep us alive in some, some cases. So I don't completely discount that fear is a bad thing if it's used in that kind of a way, right? You you have those instincts for a reason. And when you discount them, sometimes they get you in trouble. It's just you don't want them to control your life, right? Yeah. So. No, well, listening to your gut too, your your um, intuition, you, you told me about my, uh, my archetypes and one of them is intuition and yeah. Yeah. listening to, you know, and... Um, you know, listening to you and, and mine is the uh-huh and uh-uh that as well <laughs> i have to do that yeah. more i have to do that more with yeah. people but um yeah it's just uh, the the whole mind thing and the whole mind the spiritual emotional um mental physical um physical is kind of like the 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 you got to get the other three right you know for and we don't really pay attention to that stuff you know mm -hmm. and balance them out they need to be in balance right because the mental body and the physical body are that much more masculine energy. They're the driving type of energy. And then your emotional and your spiritual energy is more of your, your feminine energy, the receiving type of energy. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing you see in Western culture is we're way overbalanced on the mental and the physical body, not on, you know, balancing out the, the receiving side of the equation. Yeah. And, and, um, I think we we're living in troubled times right now. We talked about, it. we talked about it and you were, you were suggesting that, um, and you're thinking that the, we're, as we go forward, there's going to be two paths that we can take. Maybe you could, do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. So this really goes towards, you know, kind of the spiritual aspect of what I do. And, um, we're definitely in a, in a time of division. We're in a time of separation some of that is because we're really going on two different timelines. The there are there's a timeline which I would call a lower potential and a timeline I would call a higher potential. And 
a lot of which timeline you're going to be on in your experience in life. So this is where we start to talk about things like, what are you bringing into your reality? What are you creating into your reality? And if you're living in very fearful, low potential thought processes and emotions, going into control structures, you're going to probably be headed towards the lower timeline. If you're, you know, operating to a more expanded type of mental body, emotional body, spiritual body, physical body, right? You're, you're living in more of an abundant mindset versus a scarcity mindset would be one example. Scarcity mindset, scarcity emotions would be more your lower potential. Because at the end of the day, we kind of create our reality to some degree. So yes, there are things happening in the world. And yet, I have this sign that hangs up over my bed. And it's the first thing I see in the morning. And that is, you know, your circumstances don't have to dictate your inner world. And if you look at like the Viktor Frankl, you know, books and things like that, right? He was in the concentration um, camps in, in the war. He was in the Jewish camps. And he wrote the book about how he survived that. And it was because he chose to not allow that external reality to be his inner world. And so you can overcome your external circumstances just by how you focus on the higher potentials, how you, how you focus. And it's not to be a Pollyanna. It's just that you're getting some of what you attract into your life. If you're focused on positive people coming into your life, positive experiences, things that are you know aligned to who you are, and you're really energetically focused on that, you will attract that in. Abundance is one of those things that is not just financial, but it's the whole aspect and quality of your life. If you're focused on sort of negatives, you were talking earlier about, you know, who are the, are you focused on complainers and negative people and bringing those people into your life, that energy has a lower potential energy. It'll take you down that lower path. Um, mm. So ultimately, that lower potential is a more controlled society. And is that what we really, as a, at a collective, so you have individual experience, but then there are these collectives of like-minded people and which collective are you aligning to by choice? And as you align to that lower potential, it's just gets, it's, it's a downward spiral versus spiral versus an upward spiral. Right. And it's all energy at the end of the day, right? It's vibration and frequency. It's all energy and people surrounding yourself. It's very important to surround yourself with people who, who want to lift you up and not push you down or, or drag yeah. you down, right? It, it's just very important. You got to be wary of these people in your life. You know, maybe go go in a room and close the lights, sit in a chair and think about who you have in your life. What are their, um, you know, what are their attitudes? Like, what do they say? Do they say these negative things or they tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that? Those are the people right. you got to just kind of distance yourself from if you want to do anything in life. Otherwise, you're just going to get stuck. Yeah. And, you, and your truth is always inner. It's always an inner truth, right? So listening to the outer world, that's just data. But at the end of the day, the truth is within you. And that's what I really work with people on is the how to find what their truth is. We call it authority, right? We call it guidance. Um, and once you start to connect to that, what's right for other people may not be right for you. And that's how you start to separate from the herd. I had a dream when I was, I don't know, in my 30s somewhere. And um, it was interesting because my father had just passed away and I was dreaming about this herd of elephants that was walking along a fence line back where I grew up. And I was one of the elephants and we were walking along and one of them turned to me and said, it, you have to go a different direction. This is, this is not where you belong. You're following the herd and you need to hmm. go away from the herd, you know? So yeah. I got that as a sign and I followed it. Wow. But that's, you know, the dreams too. I always ping you about my dreams. Like, oh, what does this mean? <laughs> You're like, yeah. it means blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. So it's a lot, it's um, a lot of stuff that comes out of you that you have maybe internally, or you know the answer, you know, the it's inside you. you everything you need is inside you. You just got to listen to that, that voice, uh, that, that gut feeling, you know, and just go with that. 
and that that's the truth like you said the truth yeah. you know and, truth and is within. the truth and uh all right so also you're into i you have all these things about mars and retrograde i don't even know what retrograde is but i i'm like okay well she says it's in retrograde so i can't i should do this or that but what do you see for 2023 like do you have any uh predictions for 2023 based on how everything is uh yeah so if if you look at it from an energetic standpoint you look at it from what i would call an ascension standpoint um we are in a path right now and even an astrological standpoint we are in a path right now that it's building and building and building We're ex we've been in massive inner and outer excavation and we're going through a u.s pluto return and part of that means like, like that was the energy where the planets were at that point that was the energy of 1776 so we are reliving to some degree we're having that return of 1776 energy which is people moving towards sovereignty or not right it's it's really that's part of that what i talk about that bifurcation we're moving towards that split and we're we're in a collective choice right now particularly in the us of which path are we going to take and and it could be you know you see states like florida for example versus you see states like california completely different energies yeah and so right we're we're taking these collective choices of are we going to go towards a path of sovereignty? And I think of that more as it's an Aquarian template is what it is. But I think of that more as the Knights of the Round Table, that we're together or the three musketeers, one for all, all for one, right? All for all, one for all. And it's that individuals matter in the service to others mindset, right? We, we, we are individuals, but working towards the best, the highest good versus the service to self, which is I'm in it for me, right? I'm in it for me and I'm operating a lot of out of fear and scarcity and lack and control mechanisms. So that's the flip side. And it's, it's a choice. You have to, at a soul level, decide what choice am I going to make? Am I going to go to the higher potential, which is, you know, the, the, Arthurian Camelot <laughs> type of energy and we're headed towards really a big reset of what we call the galactic or the cosmic clock that's going to happen on the solstice in March so when we talk about think? that equinox that equinox time what do you think is going to happen you think it's something that we're going to we have critical mass right now to be more in the service to others but that's where that split's going to be it'll be very clear which side of the fence you're on there's no more fence sitting you can't decide you're on one or the other. You really have to, you have to choose a side. You have to choose the path of love or the path of fear. That's what it amounts to. Wow. I see it happening. I see this whole division. Well, it's the, you know, it's unfortunate and it's, it's probably manufactured yeah. too, which is horrible, you know, and people are, are just, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. You know, we see mm -hmm. that was heavy duty. I mean, if we were around 1776, psh, there's no phones. There's no things. You know, those guys signed the Declaration of Independence. They, they like, you know, went after their families, their land. They took everything from them. I mean, they stood up. And, um, you know, we have this nation because of them, you know. And, yeah. and uh, we're, we're forgetting yeah. that. We think everything is just going to be handed to us. I mean, they could just shut your phones off. They could shut everything off. You, I mean, you just got to look at what's happening in China right now, right, with <clears> social credit. And you and you can see how they could take your your financial state to zero with digital currency. They can just shut it off. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what they tried to do in Canada with the the truckers, right? Oh, you're going to be here protesting. We're just going to freeze your account. You can't. You don't have access to it. And they did it. So yeah. why can't they do it here? They do it in China yeah. too. They can and the digital currency too. They can just say, all right, you're not complying. Guess what? You don't have any money anymore. And then people are like, well, what do I invest in? Gold, Bitcoin? And everybody's like, ah, Bitcoin's going to go to zero. I'm like, well, all right. Well, it's not really controlled by anyone. But And then yeah. gold is a barbarous relic. But, you know, guess what? <laughs> Everybody's buying gold. All these governments are buying gold. There's a reason, okay? So yeah. it's just, what do you, it's just a lot of confusion, a lot, a lot of confusion. I don't know what to do. And it's affecting us personally now. It's not like, 
Uh, it's just a yeah. political thing. I mean, the COVID thing, they shut down the country, the world, excuse me, for two yeah. years, two years of our lives. We can't get back the yeah. kids, what it does to the kids, the masks, all this stuff. Yeah. So these skills, right? These skills of finding your, finding that inner truth. And for me, you know, I have a spiritual connection as well. For me, that's, that's really my North star <laughs> at the end of the day, because I believe my inner truth is really coming from a higher, a higher place because I work at my connection. Mm -hmm. You know, I make sure that I have that, that higher, um, what I call God connection for me. That's what it is. It's God. And the only way I feel like I can sort of stabilize every day is because I go to that place and I, you know, I just spend time in that, that mindset of, What's happening in the outside doesn't have to be my inner world. I can choose and I can choose con consciously and I can do it using my human design authority in particular, <laughs> but I can do that because I can say, if I really trust, if I really trust my gut, because that's my authority, if I really trust that I will get in the right place, I will be with the right people, I will be in the right places. And so that is what I trust as that inner guidance system. If you're mm. not if you're not in a place you you feel you can trust that it's very easy to, easy to be led by other people and to be controlled because it's fear right you're going to get controlled by fear oh yeah so it's good to listen to the inner gut if, if you hear something going on inside that or if you're like this is really not right you should really look at it seriously and and try to um find other people that kind of think the way you do and, um, yeah. you know, act and you, you're probably going to get a lot of pushback from a lot of people, um, yeah. which is, which is going to happen. So expect it. And, uh, it's not going to be an easy road, but you have to yeah. do what you think is, is right, you know, and, um, you can't control other, like you can't control what other people do because it's outside of your control. You can only control what you think, feel, you know, your spiritual, emotional, mental and physical body yourself like you you can control what what you're going to be and you know where you're going to go and where you're going to be you know well we don't let's hope uh, everything um kind of calms down <laughs> everything's really it's just a, like a big <laughs> pot and, and they stirred it up you know and everything's just flying around we don't know what's going to happen you know i'm it's just very uh, unnerving but uh you gotta and keep you got to keep going. <laughs> you got to keep going and you got to try to just uh, be at peace with yourself and, and be the best person you can and, yep. and, and help other people. That's, that's a very shine important. Your light. Yep. Shine right. your light. Be, yeah. Shine your light in the world. Shine your light. Excellent. All right, Rebecca, I appreciate you being on today. Thank you for taking the time out. We finally did this. We were trying to do this for a couple months, and now we're, <laughs> we're on now. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing your wisdom with everybody. If they want to get a hold of you, how can they? How can people do that? Um, my site is actually called businessmuse.com, and it's a dash between business and muse. And my email and everything's off of there. Okay, business dash muse. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you're doing great work in the um, the influential, and um, I always, you know, text you with dreams and you tell me what's going on. <laughs> it's really good, and you come on and you, you kind of you talk to us about, um, you know, the the um, how do people get their uh, human design? That's interesting. There's a website, huh. right? Yeah, there's a website you can get a free chart. It's uh, Jovian. The one I use is JovianArchive.com. Um, J O V I N A R C H I V E, and it's a free chart you can get there. Um, you can, and then there's a there's a ton of like free stuff on YouTube and whatnot. If you go research human design to be able to interpret your chart, so yeah, but people can, yeah, yeah, they can, they could ping you if they want a deeper dive, you know, sure. and you can probably help them yeah. out tremendously with there's all gates yeah. and all kinds of numbers and stuff. And it's that. just, <laughs> I but still it's, find stuff. That's and it's been 20 years <laughs> it's interesting this is very complex yeah but it's um you know it's very interesting you know you think about it but uh, i appreciate you being on if you guys like this uh the show and and like what uh, rebecca uh, is saying please and if you know somebody please share with them you know or give us uh give us a rating and review 
five stars, everything's okay. And, um, you know, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, I'm at Michael at crushing your fear.com. If you need anything and thank you, Rebecca, again, I appreciate you being on. Thank you. It was wonderful to be here. Thank you.